From the Fidelity Bank Foundation Studio, PBS Kansas presents One on One with Victor Hogstrom. This is where the interesting personalities of Kansas come to inspire and entertain us. My guest this week is a musician who plays an instrument that many of us are not familiar with. His name is Daniel Baird. His instrument, the handpan. The soothing, uplifting, almost surreal sound of handpan is a joy to the soul. We'll learn all about it and the man who makes this beautiful music on this edition of One on One. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Victor Hawkstrom. I'm delighted to welcome musician Daniel Baird to the program. Dan, your friends called you that, right? Dan, yes. welcome. Thank you for having me. You have these big soup looking bowls in your lap yes. <laughs> with covers, uh -huh. but they are not bowls. They are called pan, uh, hand pans, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And you play these Tell us about, first, your growing up days, your background, and how did you get into all this? Yeah, so um, I grew up playing saxophone and guitar, um, and then in 2009, I heard this instrument, the handpan, being played by one of my favorite bands, Spongle. Um, I was, fell in love with the sound, and I listened to it for a few years, and then I got my first handpan six years ago. Wow. And how did you learn to play this? Uh, well, I kind of started off on my own. Um, this is an instrument that is easier to play than other instruments, in my opinion. So I kind of just started off tapping around and figuring out different sounds. Um, and then over the years, I've actually gone to a hand pan gathering in Colorado each year they have one. And I've learned a lot from that because they have workshops at it. Now, with the typical instrument, uh, like a piano, for instance, you know what the keys are, and they're like a CD, blah, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. This one, uh, it has nothing that says that. Um, how do you figure it out? Yes, uh, that's a great question. So the hand pan is a little bit different than other instruments, like the piano, mm -hmm. and that the notes are not laid out uh, in a linear fashion. Um, for instance, this, this hand pan has some notes on the bottom. Oh, um, okay. So with those, you really have to use muscle memory to memorize where all the notes are. So um, a big important part of the hand pan is uh, memorizing where your notes are. So I've learned where all my notes are and then I've also memorized where all the harmonics are because each note has a couple of harmonics. So go down the music scale for us and let's see how you do this. Okay. So here is um, all, of the all of the notes on this instrument. So you have two of these. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Uh, this so, is, and this is what? Uh, each one is made in a different musical scale or key. So this one is an E major, mm -hmm. and this one is um, close to a B Phrygian. So this one sounds like Middle Eastern music, maybe like you're in a desert or riding a, a camel. Uh, this one is more dreamy sounding, and it can play a lot of familiar songs. So did you have to study music to play this or you just anyone can play it? Um, that is the nice thing about the hand pan is anybody can play them since each one is made in a different key. Mm -hmm. All these notes together go together on this one. All the notes go together on that one. So you can kind of just start off tapping around and everything's going to sound good because all the notes are in the same key. Mm -hmm. um, I think that really opens it up to um, creativity and allows you to explore 
whatever you would like. Uh, you just told us about your background a few minutes ago. Now, how do you describe yourself today? You, you, you grew up playing the guitar and the saxophone, I think you said? Mm -hmm. You stopped playing the sax and you played the guitar. You, or you play the guitar probably once in a while now because this is your dream instrument, I take it. Yes. So how do you describe yourself today? Um, well, actually the hand pain inspired me to go back to school. Um, so I got my psychology degree last year and I use this for a lot of um, therapeutic purposes. Mm. I play for a lot of uh, healthcare around town. I visit the schools and play with the kids. Um, I think this belongs in healthcare and education. So that's where I, I like to use music now. Um, it's more therapeutic for me than it was when I was growing up. I was kind of jamming and playing with my friends. Mm -hmm. um, now I, I think there's more of a therapeutic value as I get older. So are you like a one-man band when you go to play? Um, typically I just go by myself, but um, I, I would love to get other hand pan players or other musicians to join me. Um, we do have a couple of musicians that are going out to the VA regularly, so that's very exciting. So if you need a drummer, hand pan drummer, what would that sound like if you were playing and had a drummer? Um, it does sound really good with other drums. There are some... Um, real, real drums? Yes, there are some groups that are combining the hand pan with full drum sets. Okay. Um, and it sounds really good with that. That's something that I would like to start trying to incorporate as well. So what exactly is the hand pan? Um, so the hand pan was invented uh, just at the turn of the century, actually. It's 24 years old, and it was inspired by the steel pan um, from the Caribbean, and this was invented in Switzerland. Think of two steel pans that have been inverted from being concave, and they made them convex, and then they glued two of them together so it looks like a flying saucer. Right. And then they have to go into this hole on the bottom with a little hammer and tune all the notes on the inside. Um, and that just fascinates me because I don't know how they know where they're hitting by sticking their hand in there. So uh, let's, let's let our audience hear what you can play because I have seen you and heard you play in, at different uh, places and uh, in several, on several locations. So do something for us. Okay. What are you going to play? Um, I will play you... Uh, a song that has to do with the state of Kansas. Oh, okay. If you were to play that same piece on this, would that work? Um, unfortunately, it won't because the notes on this one are completely different than this one. And so even if I was to do the same pattern, it's not going to sound good. Okay, so let have, let's have you play something on this one, swap out, okay. and see what you have. Okay. Go ahead. I, I could hold that. Okay. So what was that piece? That was just something that I just kind of made up. Um, so that's the nice thing about the hand pan is you can just improvise and come up with whatever you think sounds good, or you can learn a familiar song if you want. Okay. There you go. 
Thank you. So where do you perform? Where do people see you performing? Or where can they find you performing? Um, well, I typically use these for um, healthcare or education. So every day um, I visit places around town. Today I visited a school this morning and I went to a hospital. hospital. Um, so I, I believe these belong in healthcare and education. That's where I spend a lot of my time. I also help out um, at some homeless events or um, some events for the unhoused community. Um, I, I, I do some live performances every so often, but I'm, I'm trying to get into more of that. Mm -hmm. Do you make a living playing these instruments? I do, yes. Um, every day I, I visit healthcare places um, and I visit schools, um, and then I also give lessons as well. Uh, what kind of reaction do you get from people when they hear the sounds and stop by to see you. Uh, what, what are the typical questions? Uh, usually people are fascinated. They first think that it sounds like a piano or a harp, and they are mesmerized that the sound comes out of this instrument because it's uh, rather small for the sound that it puts out. Um, and people think that it sounds maybe like water or waterfall. Um, they find it very soothing. Sometimes people go to sleep, mm. uh, so it is very relaxing. And the nice thing that I found is that pretty much everybody seems to like the handpan. Um, I know you might have a preference on country or rock music or the type of music that you like, but the handpan seems to touch everybody's soul in a different way. And you can play any kind of music on this? Uh, you could potentially learn any genre and then transfer it to the handpan. Wow. Can anyone play it? Yes, that, that is the nice thing. Any age, anybody with any musical experience, um, you can just start out with the handpan and feel like you're making music. But there are no notes to read. If you could uh, read notes, uh, music notes, how would you play? And, and, and there's nothing that indicates anything on this. Yeah, so um, when you first buy a handpan, the maker will tell you what the notes are, so you'll know oh. what the notes of the scale is, and then um, some people like to put stickers, or you can just write with a Sharpie on your instrument what the notes are, mm -hmm. um, and that can help you to remember. So you think anybody can play? I think so. Well, can I play? Yeah. Let's, Let's try it. it I tomorrow. want to try it. What do I do? Um, <laughs> so do you want to do it sitting up or standing down? Or? Uh, probably standing, because that may fall off my lap. Yeah. We don't want that, do we? No. <laughs> All right, everybody get ready to rock and roll. Victor's on the handpan. Okay, so uh, I saw you just tipping these things. Yeah, the, the trick is to pull off really quick. That one. <laughs> well, let's try this one. Okay. Let's swap. Okay. Now this you said had a little uh, connection to which part of the world? Um, this is a Middle Eastern scale. Uh huh. You tap in the circle or just along the side? You can tap either in the circle or on the flat part. Um. Well, obviously, I'm tapping, but I don't know what I'm playing. So you play something else for us. Okay. While you're standing. Okay. Um, Which one do you want? This one? Kind of then we just swap again, yeah. You put it right here. 
and I'll watch. Okay. So are you tuning it up? Well, or what do you call that? Um, the, kind of set it right, of course. Well, I just have to get it right on the stand because any if uh, if the notes are on one of these legs, then the note will not ring out. Uh. Well, since the holidays are uh, just around the corner, play something. Yeah holiday for us. All right. I didn't tell. Okay. <laughs> okay, can you do something else? Yeah. Another yeah. Christmas piece, holiday uh -huh. piece? Okay, two holiday songs, and are there world-class players of the handpan? There are. Are there, you one of them? Uh, I don't know if I would say that. I practice a lot, but there's some world-class world players that go to that gathering in Colorado each year, and I learn a lot from them. Uh, this instrument seems to be more popular in Europe, so there's some really good players over there. And I think that's just because it was invented in Switzerland, so they got a head start. So what are the natural scales necessary to learn to play the handpan? Um, I think the only skill that you really need is to be able to listen. If you can listen, then you can tap around and hear if something sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, since all the notes go together, Pretty much everybody can tap, so that's really easy to do. And you can't hit a wrong note, so as long as you can listen and hear what you want to play, then it, that's all you need. You have a story, Dan, of your father and your best friend and how they have influenced your um, professional pursuit of the handpan. What is that story? Yes. Um, so. Uh, ten years ago, my father died from multiple myeloma cancer, um, and that really kind of propelled my life into this direction of trying to help other people. Um, and then a year after I got into the handpan, about five years ago, uh, my best friend Greg Janelle, he suddenly died unexpectedly. Um, we got into the handpan together, and so once he passed, that kind of really inspired me to try to take this more into healthcare. Um, Greg was very passionate about healthcare, and my father, I saw the um, compassionate help that he got while going through cancer treatment. So I just want to try and help out the healthcare industry. Um, and then, like I said, go, go into education with this. So you help out the healthcare industry how? Um, well, this instrument is very therapeutic to listen to. It's very soothing and relaxing. It can bring some um, relaxation and comfort to residents or patients. It can also help the, the staff and the family members. It can uh, ease their mind and give them some peace and comfort. It can also give them an opportunity to complete other tasks while the patient or resident is listening to music. So for anyone watching right now and maybe interested in learning how to play the handpan, what do you advise them to do? 
Um, well, if you, if you really want to uh, learn around here, I would suggest reaching out to me. I have a website, handpandan.com, and I've been giving lessons and trying to get other people into this. It's not an instrument that you can typically find at a music store, right. and I would be cautious of the ones that you do find at a music store. Um, so it was very confusing when I got into the handpan, and I didn't really know how to start, which one to buy. So I've been giving classes and lessons to try and help people out by giving them information so that they can get started. Um, you are, you've been playing this now for how many years? I've been playing this for almost seven years. Seven years. Are you the only hand panner or hand pan player in Wichita or in Central Kansas? Or are there others? There, there's a growing community. Um, I've been given these classes and now there's over 20 players that I know about in Wichita. There might be more people that have hand pans, but there's 20 of us that get together regularly every few months. Um, and I would like to get more people into that so we can try and get an even bigger community of players. So do you see this becoming a more common instrument in the future? I think so. Um, I think we're right on the edge of this becoming a major popular instrument. Um, it's just so new, not too many people have heard of it. Surprisingly, my instruments are made in Guthrie, Oklahoma. There's a guy down there, um, his company is Pansmith, and he makes these two hours away from us. So there's people that are making these all around the country, and it's starting to get more and more popular thanks to social media. So you didn't have to go to New Jersey to buy this? I did not, no. <laughs> Thankfully, there was somebody right down the road in Guthrie, uh, Pansmith Hand Pans is down there, so. Well, uh, Dan, we are just about out of time, so why don't you tick us out with another song or two? Okay. All right. I'll just leave you with one of my little uh, melodies. All right. Daniel Baird, thank you so much for joining us one-on-one. -on -one. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching this edition of One-on-One. -on One-on-one -on -one at kpts.org is our email address. That's if you have a question or comment. Until next time, I'm Victor Hawkstrom. Do take care.